So Games Industry had an article from Matthew Handrahan, and he had a quote from Sean Layden who said that, I would welcome a return to the 12 to 15 hour AAA game. So Matthew writes, uh, former PlayStation executive Sean Layden has called for the industry to examine the trend towards bigger and more expensive games, describing the established AAA model as just not sustainable. However, while The Last of Us Part Two might represent a new level of artistic achievement for a specific type of game, it also represents another trend in the games industry. Most players could finish The Last of Us in around 15 hours, but The Last of Us Part Two takes 25 hours to complete. Naughty Dog spent three and a half years making The Last of Us, while the sequels needed six. Yeah, I'll just stop there, uh, because I think that The Last of Us uh, the first game was already much too long at 15 hours it started to repeat itself quite a lot and with the last of us part two uh, taking 25 hours if it's that same type of game where the same f first 10 hours are the same as the last 15 hours i really have to wonder um, if it's really necessary whether they can actually tell the story within the first 10 hours and for sony and naughty dog especially uh for sean Layden to bring that up uh, it's kind of telling that it just costs too much to make this type of game. Can they tell the same story in 10 hours when they can make that game in 3 years rather than taking 6 years to make a 25 hour game and it's effectively telling the same sort of story and getting the same sort of experience. Another thing is actually you know you can go and replay a game uh, if it's a 10 hour game people will feel more inclined to replay it if it's 25 hours, maybe people will say, well, maybe I won't invest that amount of time again to play it again. Now, uh, Sean Layden also had a lot of other quotes here. He said, the problem with that model is it's just not sustainable. He said, explaining that the current generation has seen the cost of development reach between 80 million and 150 million for most AAA games. I don't think in that next generation you can take those numbers and multiply them by two and think that you can grow. It's hard for every adventure game to shoot for the 50 to 60 hour gameplay milestone because that's going to be so much more expensive to achieve. And in the end you may close some interesting creators and their stories out of the market if that's the kind of threshold they have to meet. We have to reevaluate that. So for this I think it really depends uh, what type of game that you're making whether it can fit that 50 to 60 hour type of game because for something like The Last of Us Part 2 it doesn't seem really feasible because what they're trying to go for is a triple A game um, and they're trying to maximize everything uh, from in terms of the technological department uh, of the game so for 25 hours there it's just triple A, triple A, triple A all the time so for the 50 to 60 hour, the production level would probably have to be scaled back somewhat. I'm not saying it needs to be like a visual novel or a JRPG or a dungeon uh, role playing game. But um, maybe those type of games are the only ones that can really go to that 50 to 60 hour level because uh, the production costs are a lot less. And I think uh, for Sean, he is definitely right here that if they can't really keep on sustaining these type of Last of Us Part 2 games where they're 25 hours, 30 hours and they take well if on PlayStation 4 it took them 6 years to make it may take them 7 or 8 years to make for the PlayStation 5 and uh, Next Generation now he gets into the cost of uh, gaming uh, a little bit here and he says it's been $59.99 since I started in this business, but the cost of games have gone up 10 times. If you don't have elasticity on the price point, but you have huge volatility on the cost line, the model becomes more difficult. I think this generation is going to see those two imperatives collide. AAA development won't be less expensive than the current generation of great game development, he said. 4K HDR art and creating worlds don't come cheap. All the costs around gaming are labor costs, right? You don't have to build a factory, you don't have to turn sand into glass. So how can we look at that and say, is there another answer? Instead of spending five years making an 80 hour game, 
what does three years and a 15 hour game look like? Personally, as an older gamer, I would welcome a return to the 12 to 15 hour game. I would finish more games, first of all, and just like a well edited piece of literature or a movie, looking at the discipline around that could give us tighter, more compelling content. And I gotta say, um, when the industry moved from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2, we were getting seven to eight hour games at the start and people were wondering what was going on. Uh, well, definitely with the PlayStation 2, it took a little bit longer to develop because it was a new system and a new architecture. And uh, we weren't getting those 15 to 20 hour games that we were seeing like Resident Evil 2 uh, with the PlayStation 2. Uh, say for example, Silent Hill 2 was only about maybe eight to 10 hours long. And we were getting a lot of those type of games for the first couple of years before we had Grand Theft Auto 3, before we had Gran Turismo and Final Fantasy X. It took some time to get those type of games, but at the start, um, we were getting a lot of seven, eight hour games. And I thought at that time, while it really felt quite expensive to get them, the actual experience of around eight to 10 hour game is uh, a, an enjoyable one so um, I I don't think I always felt that about 15 hours was um, a good value um, and 8 to 10 hour would mean a good experience and anything above like between 20 to 30 hours it was kind of like pushing me to um, it was almost forcing me to go and play uh, more of the same sort of thing over and over again now I've enjoyed a lot of uh, 50 to 60 hour games, but I think um, by and large, like as a generalization, um, between 10 to 20 hour games is a really reasonable amount of time. And just one last point here, he writes that um, it's been $60. Uh, and to be honest, I think that um, $60 and not having to push the price up, um, I think that's better than going to $70. Uh, I understand that you may uh, want to front load the price because you know you can just charge whatever you want, right? But I think it makes more sense if people enjoy the game, if it's $60, to then go and uh, charge them for like an expansion pack or some DLC for $10 rather than having it up front. So uh, I would say I would prefer that it was $60, um, but it seems as though he's saying that they need to increase the price somewhat uh, for next generation. And we've got another story uh, about NBA 2K uh, where they're increasing the price, so we'll get into that. But I think um, in terms of uh, $60 games, they're uh, with Sean and everybody else in the industry, it seems like they're really considering having to push the price up for next generation.